As the Ariane 5 countdown proceeds, specially invited observers gather at Jupiter 2 to witness the launch of Europe's new rocket. Then suddenly, at just over 11 minutes before liftoff, the weather shows red. The meteorologists have exercised their right to intervene in the final moments before the start of the automated liftoff chronology. Despite the presence of observers and the pressures to launch, the team will not risk the rocket unless they are 100% sure of everything. The countdown runs on until seven minutes from zero hour just one minute before the automated countdown is due to kick in. Arrêt des comptes, tous les moyens sont en configuration. H-7 minutes, rouge météo critère C2, rouge cluster pour programmation du séquenceur de vol. Because the countdown sequence has been interrupted, cluster shows a red. It is an event that has been anticipated and rehearsed. The satellites operate in a different countdown system to coincide with their separation from each other, which is expected to occur at approximately 29 minutes after takeoff. Their countdown has to be interrupted simultaneously, or they could separate at the wrong time in flight. When Ariane 5 countdown resumes, so will clusters. The clock stays firmly at seven minutes as the weather refuses to break. Bernard and his team monitor all their instruments looking anxiously for a way to give the launcher team a green light. As they watch, threat of lightning begins to recede from their screens. But they know that any real break in the weather will come from the north, from the Atlantic coast. All they need is a window of 20 minutes without risk of wind or lightning for the rocket to successfully pass the danger point of 20 kilometers. <coughs> At Jupiter 2, the tension becomes almost unbearable as the seven-minute clock holds. Then, almost an hour after stopping the launch, the meteorologists give the green light. At 11 minutes before liftoff, cluster begins its countdown to resynchronize with Ariane 5 at 7 minutes. Visibility from a powerful observational telescope on Devil's Island still seems poor, but then the meteorologist approved right. In the north, the sky seems brighter. The weather begins to break. The half-hour window that the meteorologists have predicted is on its way. At 12.26 GMT, 8.26 local time after nearly an hour's delay, the final countdown begins once more. Attention pour reprise du décompte. Top. À tous les déos, le décompte est repris. Nouveau H0 visé. 12h33 minutes 59 secondes, temps universel. This is the first actual. Uh, experiment and I think that for a few seconds we will hold our breath il y a toujours des impondérables there are no 
probabilities which are equal to one in this business, so uh, there is always a chance that something goes wrong. Asseyez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Attention pour H moins une minute. When the time is going, uh, t, t minus 12 hours is better. T minus one hour, it's, we are quiet. And that T minus still uh, runs the lift up. We are doing our job. Top moins une minute de compte. Tous de les deux. Attention pour des comptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, feu. At 12.33.59 GMT, the Vulcan engine Allumage. ignites. 7.5 seconds later, solid booster ignition lifts the 720 tons off the launch pad. Everything seems normal. The rocket is now traveling at 857 kilometers an hour. At a height of 3,500 meters, 37 seconds into the flight, the directional nozzles on both boosters suddenly swivel to the limit and point the launcher towards the town of Kourou. Tous les paramètres propulsifs sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Flight 501 is suddenly over. Seven hundred and twenty tons of shattered hardware and toxic fuel rained down on the space base. No one quite knew what had happened except that the day had turned to disaster. Well, the it was a, a great uh, deception, uh, so much greater that the beginning of the flight was perfect, and uh, all the uh, ground sequence was uh, also perfect. So it has been a great joy, followed by a great disappointment. When the launcher breaks up, the onboard safety system detects that something is wrong. There are some liaisons which are broken, and it automatically destroys what remains of the launcher. And at one minute and six seconds, the ground safety officer 
who observes that the trajectory is ab uh, abnormal gives the destruct command which, which has already taken place. So that's all we can say at this stage. I want to, to express first that uh, it was the first testing flight. And uh, that's normal when we make totally new launchers that uh, we may face to some risk. But we, it's clear that we are totally determined to go totally to the end of this. And uh, there will be an uh, inquiry board which will make all the transparency and the clarity on the reasons of this and on the needed modification for uh, uh, giving the guarantee for the next flight. While events are still raw, teams set out on the difficult task of recovering evidence to try to understand what has happened. Pieces of the shattered rocket are left where they fell for the inquiry team to examine. A bitter reminder of the frailty of man's dreams and ambitions. For the cluster teams, there is little left to find, except a tangled mess. A souvenir of what a fall from four kilometers can do to even the most expensive satellite. Back in Paris, the rocket teams are determined. There will be another Ariane 5, but when? I think it's much too early to say today. The investigation board just started one week ago, and we have to give them the full uh, visibility, uh, full freedom to do what they have to do to make the decision they want to make. They will make recommendation, will accept the recommendation, and will take the time necessary to apply all their recommendations. And I would like to pass to... For the cluster scientists, there are no such easy solutions. They took a risk in a time-honored fashion, but it was a risk that did not pay off. When I read through the press uh, after the event, uh, I am a little bit uh, disappointed, uh, to say the le least, that uh, the science is not uh, so strongly shown as being the main victim of this uh, catastrophe. The scientists, you, all your teams have been really working hard for 12 years. I'm not saying that uh, others in this program have not worked hard, but certainly uh, there is somewhere, some flaws, which we have to identify. There is an inquiry board which is working. I have asked myself that this inquiry board doesn't look only at the cause of the problem. And if I understand well, they have recovered hardware from the launcher, which helps them to identify very fast what has happened. If it's so easy to identify what has happened, why wasn't it discovered before? Why the customer of this launch was not able to say, no, we cannot launch because we have no confidence? Or we have reservations on the level of qualifications of some hardware? I think these questions must be answered, and you, the scientist, should have the answer. You must request this answer, you should have this answer, you must understand what has happened. Why? Were we so confident at the beginning of this program to fly on this launcher? Why have we been betrayed? Coming next, a few extraordinary snapshots from the lives of five young people who've struggled against the odds to provide themselves and their families with better lives. Harlem Diary.